Do you know that we, from people, have no issue that there are billions of Muslims that are not Jewish? We don't want them to become Jewish. We don't mind that they're not Jewish. We have no issue with them. There's millions and millions of Christians. We have no issue. They have a problem with us if we're not like them. So let's understand what they do. So imagine that they come over to you with a gun or with a whatever, a, a knife, and they say, if you don't accept the Savior, yeah, Yashka, we're going to kill you. That's, that's happened to Jewish people, right, in the past. So uh, let's, let's just think this through. Let's say that this Jewish guy, Mr. Goldstein, he says, okay, yeah, I accept him. He says, oh, very good, they don't kill you. So do they think he accepted him? You can't accept a different way of life right now. It takes time till you be'etzim accept somebody as your savior. So what are they thinking exactly? That they're so happy because he accepted it. You can't really accept something like that. They should threaten you. If you don't go to school to learn how to accept our savior, then we're going to kill you. But what do they think happened? See, we're, we're Jewish people, we're much deeper than that. They're not deep. They're like, you know, you accept Muhammad or we're going to blow you up. Okay, I accept Muhammad. Okay, great, let's go to the next guy. They think that you just changed everything in your whole DNA and you just accepted a whole religion that you don't know anything about? Don't you have to learn it first? Right? Jewish people, that's why we, we would never tell. We say, if you don't accept Yiddishkeit, we're going to kill you. And the guy says, I accept. We're going to say, wait, wait, he didn't change anything in his brain. We have to teach you. We have so much to teach you. So how could you force somebody to accept a concept? First of all, they didn't learn it. And even if they want it, it takes time to accept it. You have to learn about it, you have to know about it. That's the thought that popped into my head today. What do you think? <coughs> Isn't it true? So what are they thinking when they say, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to need to burn people alive unless you accept. So what happens to be our religion says that we have to get burnt alive, right? But, but put our religion aside for a second. A guy is not Ahmed bin Hussain. He says, yeah, I accept it. They, they don't burn him. But it's such it's foolishness. He did, he, you can't accept a new religion <laughs> just like that. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, now just to make it a, a drop more serious, I heard a word from Reb Chaim Yisrael Weinfeld from his father, Reb Avram Weinfeld. In a safer, I forgot what it's called. It's a murder of word. So he says like this, beautiful. Avram Avinu made Gerim. Yitzchak came to town, and when his Hanhaga made this Agvur, where all the Gerim? So Chazal tells us that they got lost, they left. They couldn't help the Gvura. So it's very schwer to understand. First of all, imagine a guy uh, opens up a yeshiva, Ar Sameach, in, in New Ar Sameach, and he has, you know, 300 guys in the Bismedrish. The new Rosh Yeshiva takes over and it goes 290, 280, 270, 260, 240, 200. Enrollment is dropping. Wouldn't the guy think, you know, maybe I'm being too tough? Maybe I should change my, my, maybe I should go back to the way the old Rosh Hashiva. He used to give everybody hugs. And maybe I'm being too tough where well, you would lose everybody. So what's Pshat in Yitzchak? So he says like this. Oh, the next Kasha. Um, Rivka does not know that she has twins. She thinks she has one kid. And she goes in front of the shul. He wants to go to shul. She goes in front of the, yeah, and he wants to jump out. And she says, Mkein Lamaza Anoichi. Okay, and if this is the kind of kid that I have, what do I need this for? So listen to what he says. How did Avram Avinu make somebody a ger? So we all know. The guy would come in, he's hungry. We'd have a nice little restaurant. We'd serve him nice, good tongue. At the end, he says, you know, thank you. He says, don't thank me. I want you to bench. And you should thank Hashem. And the guy says, really? Who is this Hashem guy? He makes good tongue. Really? Mustard, come tomorrow night for dessert. And from the Eshel, from the Achilles, see Alina, all of a sudden, you ended up a guy goes ahead, leaves the religion of his parents and grandparents for many dairies, and becomes a Yid. That's how Avram Avinu did it. So he says like this, Yitzchak Avinu understood, it's very nice, you can make somebody change his mind, like we were talking before. You can, with a meal, you can get someone, I accept Yiddishkeit. But metazel cheschaira, kemenesh machen aklal Yisrael. You can't make a klal Yisrael that's going to be able to survive prosecution, persecution, a Spanish Inquisition, a Holocaust, from, from Schaira, that all of a sudden in one meal the guy switches his whole, his whole life around. That, it's an interesting gedank. This is very nice. He made a Balchuva. But it's a very Shvacha Balchuva that he was going to abandon his whole 
way of life because the guy gives him a good meal and tells him there's a new, there's a new sheriff in town, there's a new God, new God, and he says, okay, I'm in. I like this guy. Chill on Thursday night. Okay, I'm in. Well, the pagans, the pagans don't have chill on Thursday night. So that's it. I'm in. A mikveh, ice a mikveh. Zay geshmak. I'm in. He says a guy who switches so fast, metazelachas chayre kemen ishbayin aklal yisrael, and never going to make it through the dairis. So Yitzchak was willing to lose those guys, those chavra, even though they were Avram Avinu's legacy. That's what he says, because they're not going to make it. Comes very interesting that Avram Avinu has to needs a needs a shidduch for Yitzchak. So he tells Eliezer, "Don't take a kid for my son from this neighborhood. Go back to." To? Huh? My old family, my old location, or Kazdim. Stelt sich Kasha. So, but Weinfeld is the following Kasha. I don't understand. In Ur Kazdim, they threw him into a, into a, they don't want to hear from him. Over here, he's wildly successful, making Bali Tshuva. Why would he tell him, don't take from here, go back there? He said, because to build Klal Yisrael, you can't have wishy washy people. He said, over here, I know that Takachu business is good, but over a meal they switch. I need a shit for my kid. Go back over there to that community in Urkazdim, where if somebody comes with a new idea, they throw them into a Kivshana Eish. Those people, they get tried, they're loyal to their family. That's the kind of schayra that I need. So, Dafka, you need to go over there. Eliezer goes out and he's looking and he does the whole thing and he comes up with Rivka. Dafka Rivka. Why? Because don't take somebody from over here where business is booming. Go back over there to Urkazdim. Get one of those tough, right? Rivka goes ahead and thinks that she has one kid and she says, so this kid, he's wishy-washy. He's happy to go to shul, he's happy to go to a Yankee game. Im Kane, lama za'anaychi. Why do you have to marry me? What's my purpose of being here? You could have married anybody if you can have a wishy-washy kid. So they told her, no, it's two separate kids. So, oh, that's a different story. The answer is all the shyness. So we understand. We want our kids and everybody to do. It's true. And you can convince them, you can bribe them, right? But when someone says, I accept it, it's not really accepting until it's really accepting. The whole chinuch system is lahavi oyser, like I said before, from the Nesiv Shalom. Chinuch amiti, real chinuch, is not to pressure a child to behave well. Elahavi oyser kadeshi yirtzabazeh. You have to bring him to want it. So yes, you have to teach him how to daven, and you have to tell him now you stand up, and now we don't talk, and that's part of it. But if you pressure too much, you actually break the rutzen. That's the delicate balance that you need to have. The real chinuch is to make a child at 20 years old, at 25, at 30, to develop a child's ratzain, to like to talk to Hashem. Many people have kids who davened well, but they don't want to talk to Hashem. So they lost the kid. That's not tefillah. You have to teach the kid to want to talk to Hashem. You have to teach the kid to want to learn Torah. Not to do. You have to do it until you want it, but don't break the ratzain. Because we don't want to be like those other religions that we think that just because you say, I, I accept, fine, we're not going to kill you. We're okay with that. No, we're not okay with that. Because we need to have schayra that doesn't just go with the flow and say, okay, I'll behave, I go to camp and I do well. It's much deeper than that. We need to raise generations that are going to be willing to jump in a fire. Rahman al we should never be tested. To be able to survive. And sometimes it's miyad achi, miyad esav. Sometimes it's a fire, and sometimes it's an internet, and sometimes it's all kinds of stuff that who knows what the next generation is going to have. If the child is not internally getray, and is only going along with it because of the prizes and the meals and the eishel, and all the nice stuff, then we fail to be mechanech, the child, lahavi oisoi, to want to be an erlechiyit.